Goodbye, quiet quitting. Hello, lazy girl jobs. That is the name of the latest Gen Z career trend that's going viral on TikTok. The movement opts for low stress jobs that favor more work life balance. Susie Welch explores the factors behind this new career path in her latest op ed for the Wall Street Journal. And joining us right now is NYU Stern School of Business professor Susie Welch. Susie, welcome. It's great to have you on set. Thank you so much. All right, this is one I had not heard of until you wrote this op ed. What is it? I had not heard of it either until it was brought to my attention by my students and others. And it's a trend uh, and a quite a uh, popular one on TikTok where a life coach, it started with a 20-something life coach, so self-described, um, advocated for young women in this case to take jobs, low stress, 60 to 80K, where you can just check in, kind of mentally uh, do very little, and then clock out and collect your uh, paycheck, and, and then spend the majority of your life focusing on what's happening outside of work and, uh, and becoming amazing humans. Um, and I uh, saw this, and probably uh, maybe I, my head did not explode the way Joe's might have. But I, 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 I issue with this. Yeah, I will. Well, it may. It's it's more of what I've been hearing, which is this. Uh, for me, it wasn't so much the word lazy. Um, I think that they don't want to be lazy so much as what I generally experience from uh, Gen Z, which is this does strong desire to avoid anxiety at any cost. And actually, this is what drove me to go speak to a, a psychiatrist who specializes in Gen Z anxiety and say, what's going on here? And the, what the ph phenomenon is, is this overwhelming desire to, to not feel discomfort, and that <laughs> includes in your career. I know. I mean, and my I, argument... I understand it. I mean, Believe I don't want to feel it either. I don't I mean, either. But my argument to my students is, okay, well, sort of, you call it anxiety. Could it just be adulthood where you have a lot of trade-offs and I, look anxiety disorder is real I will you know that is a true condition that is pe puts people in hospitals it needs to be medicated I understand we're not talking about anxiety disorder but this is the general zeitgeist around everything that makes you vaguely uncomfortable allows you to say I have anxiety remember in Barbie the first human emotion that Barbie feels I don't know if you've seen it yet highly recommend the first human emotion Barbie feels is anxiety she is walking and becoming a human, and she says, I feel fear with no object. And somebody pops up behind her and says, that's just anxiety. Don't worry. You know, we all have it. And it's like, do we all have it? Well, maybe. Well, okay. But you think part of this is our parenting to blame for what's happened here. We've made it too easy for these kids their whole lives and not let them feel any of the stressors. Well, I wish it wasn't true, but I, when I was speaking to uh, Jen, Dr. Jen Sotsky, who's a psychiatrist, she said, I said, how did this happen? And she said, well, think about the parenting. Um, uh, and I am one of those parents who you work very hard to keep discomfort or anything that's hard out of your kids' lives. It's or with failure. the best. It's you great. jump in to help out. Best intentions. We love them so much. Um, and we try to keep them from feeling terrible, uh, you know, bad things. And then what happens is they get no practice with anxiety. And anxiety is something that when you've done it a few times, you think, oh, it doesn't kill me. I can go on. I can, I can do hard things. But what you get is a bunch of 20-somethings who have never really had to make hard decisions or do very hard things. And then when they start to feel it, they're like, ow, ow, I want to run away. Can I add something else to, yes. the, to the pot, though? I was thinking a lot about this since I read the op-ed. How much of it is because these kids live through the pandemic and all of us made life reassessments during the pandemic where we were thinking, wow, is this what I want to spend my time and focus on? And how much do you miss being home with the family and spending that time with them? We yeah. kind of went through that. Is it worth the trade-off? I, I think it's actually, with the younger generation, we were making different thoughts about it. I think our generation was saying, wait, being at home with the family is kind of great. You yeah. know, maybe I should do more of this. I think with them, the pandemic brought into their lives a lot of uncertainty. Um, a lot of the routine school sort of vanished, and they did feel discomfort with it. So what they're trying to do is not feel more discomfort, because that was a two, three-year period where there was just no visibility. And they want not to have that feeling of uh, floating in the, in the miasma. I don't know if it's so much about that. I also think, and I felt this with fun employment, another trend that I wrote about, um, that there's a little nihilism going on, which is the whole world's going to end anyway with climate change, and um, there's, we're never going to make it. So why would I invest in a long-term future? Why would I play the long game? That's why the would downside I... to all the hysteria. It's, it's ludicrous, because the world's not ending, uh, as we know. And we've had it. We've, uh, I can go back and give you the predictions in the 90s, the aughts, and, and after I don't know. for the I same thing. I just saw thing. Oppenheimer. I'm, I'm a little less. That, you've got a, a much better chance of ending that way. I'll is, tell you, you know, that much. But Susie, yeah, I, there, there's times when I, you know, I say, wow, it's, it's, a, it's a pain getting old, right? Yeah. 
What are the alternatives? I mean, it's a pain with getting anxiety when you're living your life, but the alternatives are not living your life. But, I mean, it, it, it's just a fact of the matter. And maybe we have. I have tried to spare my kids. I hope they've never had a bad day, right. either one of them, right. in their entire life. Right. Is that... Am I wrong to do that? Do they, they need to be at the school hard knocks at some I think point? that probably the answer is yes. Look, I did the same thing, Joe. I mean, I tried to help my kids and keep them from anything. Although my kids, after this article appear, all have informed me that they experienced plenty of anxiety <laughs> despite That's my life. best efforts. Right. That they like, you know, Mom. But I would say that we did it because we love them. And I think maybe there should be a swing back in parenting to say, guess what? You're going to feel anxiety. That's actually good yep. for you. It's going to help you in the long run. You know, um, and maybe actually put some real work. world anxiety might be preferable to the horrible anxiety that they must get on, on social media. You yes, know, I, and social media and plays a huge role in that. That's the where the anxiety is. Go out in the world. Look, I, the the anxiety is not as bad. This may self-correct anyway because what's going to happen is eventually people are going to react to just being bored. Okay, so if you sort of choose to opt out, opt out of everything so that you're not feeling anxiety... Yeah, you're not, you're not talking mean, about just, just making money. You're talking about mental challenge. Man, like, you have to, to be mentally and emotionally right. stimulated. If you keep on trying to protect yourself and insulate yourself to the point where, you know, all anxiety is out of your life, are you even living? I mean, are you even experiencing the great joy? I mean, think about a startup. When you take part in a startup, you... I ran a startup for a few years. I didn't sleep for the four years I was doing right. it. But it was the f most fun thing I've ever done. It was the most anxiety-producing, um, but it was stressful, I should say, because anxiety is, a, is really a serious condition. But I, I, I would advise everybody to do it. I'd say take a hard job. Right. And maybe the, maybe the pendulum will swing back when they experience the consequences of this kind of life. 40 hours a week to just clock in and clock out. That's a lot of hours of your yeah, life. the worst jobs I've just, ever had have been right. the ones where I'm actually looking at the clock thinking, when is, is this, this going to be over? Exactly. How long can you do it for? Nothing yeah. ventured, nothing gained, yes. too. And if you don't, if you haven't learned about loss, you can't learn about, I know. about winning. And, I, and you can't, yeah. if you haven't seen the sunshine, or you can't see the sunshine if you haven't seen the rain, Susan.